Good evening, Hepper Spinners. Today we're setting up Retro Arch and Rocket Launcher, so get ready. Alright, guys, so to continue on with the Retro Arch uh, tutorial series, uh, once you've got Retro Arch all set up, uh, we're going to go ahead and link this together with uh, Rocket Launcher. So. What I'm going to do is go straight to HyperHQ and we're going to set up a system. Uh, the example that I'm going to be using is for hacked games. Uh, so what you'll do is go to the main menu wizard tab. You'll push the plus sign and then put the system name that you're after. You know, it literally could be pretty much any system that you're trying to set up. But for my example, I typed in hacked games. And you'll hit next a couple times and it'll congratulate you that you've added the system. And what you'll do is go to the wheel settings tab here, select from the drop down the system that you just created, and you will put in the settings like this. So the one caveat with Hyper HQ, the reason why I've got this thing set up uh, like I do right now is because I also use Hyper XML Spin, which allows me to select any game regardless of system and emulator. Uh, across the board. So uh, that little uh, application allows you to do that as long as you've got HyperHQ set up in the way that I've got set up. So if you are wanting to do uh, nested wheels and uh, you know have a playlist uh, wheel itself, uh, this would be recommended to uh, you know set up along the way so you don't have to go back and uh, you know redo some of this work. So anyhow I'm going to go ahead and continue here. Uh, the executable is set to RetroArch XE. Uh, you just push the little folder icon here and you'll find wherever your RetroArch is set up. And then your game path is going to be wherever you put your games. The extension is going to be a little long for RetroArch because it essentially plays most any file. Uh, 7z, zip, rare, q, bin, sfc, gba, gb, gbc, nec, uh, trying to scroll through here, uh, ngc, ngp, gg, sms, md, a26, pce, cpr, smc, md, 32x, fdx, z64, and nds, and yes I just read that. Uh, next we're going to go to the wheels tab. Nothing changes here. You might want to match your alpha. Uh, that's your sort of fade of your logo uh, of your system when you're scrolling over to it. Navigation themes. I recommend using wheels only so it only displays the media that you have. And check as you see here. You will want to use the reload backgrounds for sure. And everything else is uh, your choice. Videos is blank, sound is blank, your left is default, and special art is going to be what, you know, if you have special art, so I've got sort of a nice border around my uh, my games, uh, it's sort of a genre up in the top right corner, and then um, basically an instruction card at the bottom saying, you know, what the controls are. Uh, so if you have one of those, make sure that you are set up with your X and Y axis that uh, you've been using and make sure things are enabled. If you don't have any special art, just uh, uncheck any of those enabled uh, check marks there to disable it. I'm going to go ahead and close out HyperHQ now and we are going to go to uh, Rocket Launcher UI. When you go to the global uh, settings here, you're going to click the emulator tab here. You're going to go down to RetroArch and if you don't see it, then what you'll want to do is push this little green plus sign to add it manually. Uh, same process is going to be uh, once I get to it here. So we're scrolling here, double clicking to open it, and you see RetroArch. If you click the plus sign, uh, you'll just type in all of the things that you see here. So what you're going to want to do is go to the path of your RetroArch uh, XC. You're just going to push the magnifying glass and then click it. And then what you're going to do is type in the ROM extensions here, uh, and you're going to select the RetroArch Auto Hotkey, which uh, please be sure to update or have updates always on for Rocket Launcher UI so you never miss a beat and you are using the latest and greatest uh, module that matches your RetroArch uh, version. So I'm going to go ahead and read this uh, ROM extensions just so I know that you've uh, been able to type this in manually. 
And so we've got 7Z, Zip, Rare, Cuban, SFC, GBA, GB, GBC, NES, NGC, NGP, GG, SMS, MD, A26, PCE, CPR, MIN, ROM, NDD, N64, DDD, and BS. So that covers a lot of systems, as you see. Uh, those are the specific files that it will be able to launch. And once you've done that, what you're going to do is scroll down to the game that you've, or the, sorry, the system that you've set up. So what we're after is hack games for this example. And what you're going to want to do is go to settings, and these are just my preferred set settings here. I'm going to hide the cursor. We're going to set to true. Everything else is uh, set to use global. So if you haven't already been following my channel, check out the rocket launcher tutorials. Uh, you know, we'll just say videos one through three, and you can find that in the playlist below. Uh, but that is what I'm using, the use global, based on those settings that you saw in the first video. Uh, virtual drive is set to false here, it looks like. And everything else is set to use global. The skip checks is almost always set to false. Uh, next we're going to go to bezels, that's an important one. Uh, so if you like using bezels for the particular system, virtual arc basically supplies support for almost every system uh, in terms of bezels, but uh, for the hack games themselves uh, system, I set that to false because there was no real, um, you know, good bezel, if you will, uh, to uh, activate those. So for this example, I've got set to false, but uh, in 99% of my other systems, I've got set to uh, true. So uh, just kind of keep that in mind. Go ahead and uh, select true there if you are wanting bezels, which I do recommend uh, as a whole. Uh, what else? We're going to look at the fade general. So same thing applies here. I do recommend the fade in and fade out approach. What you're going to do is uh, you know set those to true. Uh, that's essentially what that use global uh, is. And then fade out, I've got set to true as well. Uh, if they don't show up on your system, you might play around with the transition animation. Legacy fade-in transition almost always works when it uh, does not work uh, in general for the default. Same thing applies for fade out. You're going to check uh, legacy if the default does not work. And we are going to be moving along here. So next we've got emulators tab. You're going to select the default emulator, which is going to be RetroArch or you know whatever you named it as. Um, you can see here, Hack Games, Hack Games, it's the same thing. Um, just wanted to uh, differentiate, uh, you know, the the global uh, settings here of RetroArch and Hack Games. I, you know, for me, like I always like to test things slowly, and I want to make sure things are uh, working. So. That's why we've got this. Uh, Hack Games is a, the same uh, setup for RetroArch. Not to be confusing here, but you know, you can see that I even created a module. I just copied the uh, RetroArch module itself, and I named it Hack Games because I didn't want it, you know, to screw up uh, the regular RetroArch uh, setup. So uh, you can see everything is exactly the same. Uh, but I wanted to show you the sort of power here, especially with, uh, you know, the hack games. We, we've got, you know, games from, uh, you know, a ton of different systems, and RetroArch uh, eats it for breakfast. So uh, just put in the game paths up here at the top, just put the plus sign for every location that, uh, you know, these games are uh, displaying. And if, you know, you're wanting to, you know, one wheel, so to speak, and, you know, various systems, then it can totally do that. You just put in those uh, game paths up at the top. Next, we're going to the modules tab and we're gonna select RetroArch. You do see a little red message for me. It does not matter, uh, it still works. The M system header is wrongly defined. Yeah, doesn't matter. Uh, if you click on the uh, sort of, I don't know, posted note uh, paper icon, you're gonna see the module notes. Go ahead and read over those, but in general, it's just, trying to get around any issues that you might uh, run into. So go ahead and read that if uh, things, uh, you know, do not work uh, well for you. But, uh, 
you know, it should be pretty straightforward uh, otherwise. So what we're going to do is go to the global module settings button. We're going to hit, uh, we're going to click on it, and then you're going to just select all of your settings. So your configure folder. So in the rocket launcher, uh, or sorry, the retro arch folder, you should have a config folder. What you'll do is open that, and you're basically going to push this magnifying glass and find that config folder. Once you've done that, you push OK. And that's the path to your configuration folder. If you uh, have a configuration per, four, or per core setting turned on, what you'll do is set that to true. So that allows you to have specific configurations per system. That's all that is. Remember, a core is equivalent to a system. I've got that set to false because I've got a general, um, you know, setup with the uh, you know hack games. So I'm using uh, a global. Uh, core settings essentially so that's why it's set to false and we're gonna move on network if you've got this set up uh, to play online play you would put in all your uh, unique identi or unique identifiable information there and your hack games uh, this is where it gets a little trickier but it's really not too bad here you can see most of this stuff is set to uh, you know blank or default which is fine the core itself so if you go into uh, retroarch here you're going to find a cores folder and what you're going to want to do is within retroarch if you haven't already download basically every core that you can and remember that's your system essentially so for hack games i just picked a random one uh, you can see that the names of all the cores are here and there's the uh, pico drive so if, you know, if we had a, a specific system that you were setting up, you would just pick the one that matches uh, that system. And the, yeah, that's it. You just toss it in there. Uh, push the magnifying glass, find the core, and then click on it. And what we're going to do is also, since we're looking at hack games themselves, if you want, uh, you know, game specific, you know, because you've got a wheel that has multiple uh, systems in it, you could click on the... Uh, the game settings here and push the plus sign to select the game that you're after and then you can see that you know the the core down here below might be different than you know some of these others so i mean you'll get familiar sorry if you get familiar with the uh the cores themselves you know that is you know a specific system you know that is a, spe a specific system uh, and there's exactly how it's named in the DLL. So you'll just take the name before the DLL, pop it in there, or push the magnifying glass and select the game that you're after. Uh, so that's really all there is to it. It's uh, relatively easy, uh, comparative speaking. And uh, you know, once you've got that thing set up, um, or RetroArch as a whole, it's really easy in uh, Rocket Launcher to set up a system, you know, if you know that core is supported. So. Um, yeah, that's that's it guys and uh, you know, we'll catch you next time